to rehearse the weekend before and get his feedback. Mm -hmm. When I gave my icebreaker speech, I didn't feel like it was the smoothest delivery, but being so nervous about it drove the, to extra preparation, which created a sort of muscle memory and it allowed me to get through it. The first time I stood up for table topics, I nervously ummed my way through 30 seconds and sat down. Mm -hmm. Now I'm still nervous, but less so, and can pretty easily breeze through the one minute requirement. <laughs> <laughs> In my first evaluation of Mary T, I declared that I needed to stall for time, and she coached me to a green light from the table. During my second evaluation, I didn't even look at the timer and approached the podium feeling much more prepared. Toastmasters definitely gave me a few things to take away and continue to work on. The club taught me what parts of public speaking I'm good at, and more importantly, what parts I'm bad at. My body and hand movement can be stiff. <laughs> and lead to a lackluster presentation. Hands in my pockets are still in my chest to give away my nervousness. Any unscripted speech leads to filler words like ums and ahs, which give me consistent evaluation marks. Injecting myself personally and emotionally into a topic and releasing the built-up stress of speaking are items I know I need to work on. I think it was Julie, who's not here today, who said, you'll never be able to listen to someone talk on TV the same way again, and she was definitely right about that. <laughs> Anytime I hear someone talk off script and it's littered with fillers, I immediately take notice. Sometimes I wonder how they get so much screen time without realizing they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> if I could provide any advice to newer members based on my relatively short experience, it's to embrace the challenge and nervousness that comes with getting up in front of people and talking. To always say yes when asked if you're ready to speak. Because if you wait around, you'll never really be ready. Speaking in this club, just like many other things in life, is sometimes just about plugging your nose and jumping in the cold water, knowing you'll get out eventually. So in closing, public speaking seems to be a muscle that you have to exercise. You have to fail, sometimes a lot, before you can become any better at it. Public speaking can be particularly difficult because it's so nerve-wracking to perform, even in such a forgiving environment as this. But I usually find that the things you least want to do are often the most rewarding. Whether it's going the extra mile on a school paper, not spending the money you know you shouldn't, staying late at work or having that hard, unpleasant conversation with a coworker or employee, or begrudgingly agreeing when Greg tells you it's time to speak. <laughs> For some of us, fighting our <coughs> natural desire for sedimentary lifestyles in body and mind is how we mature and advance as people. And for me, Toastmasters has been a vital part of my quest to wangle personal advancement in 2019. <laughs>